Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm in my gameplay chair, so that means we're in for a gameplay video today. Today we're going to be diving into Gala Games and their prize game, Townstar. Uh, if you don't know Townstar, it plays very similarly to Farmville. Uh, I was really excited to play this because basically I am tired of waiting for my neighbor Alice to come out and I really want to dive into that, so I thought we would just pick it up with something kind of similar and play a bit of Townstar. So yeah, if you want to uh, check out some Townstar, please hold out for our gameplay and everything we're going to go in. I'm going to be discussing a little bit of details about the game, some little helpful uh, tricks and hints that'll help you kind of max your productivity of your farm. Uh, we're also going to give a little bit of history about the program and its creators and all that. So if you know me, welcome back to the channel. Uh, great to see you. And if you don't, I'm JP. Uh, this is DCP Media. We are Digital Currency Pros Media. We are a company at the corner of crypto and gaming, and we are super excited to take you along for the journey with us today. So without any further ado, let's jump in to our topic today of Gala Games' Townstar. All right, awesome. So let's jump right in, guys. So Townstar, if you don't know, so this game came out back in 2020. So one of its creators was the original founders of Farmville, if you don't know that. So Eric Shearmeyer. Make sure we have that name correct. Uh, yeah, so here's one of the main creators of this game. So jumping right in, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make an account. So the account is free to make. So you just want to go to the Gala Games website and you can just sign up. Basically, it's gonna you're going to want to get like a Google Authenticator app or something that's going to help you sign in each time you go. And then once you have your account set up, you can literally just start playing the game. So this will work for either Apple or PC. It doesn't matter. Okay guys, so quick thing before we jump into the game, uh, I just wanted to take you guys down and show you some of the NFT options that are also integrated in all of this. Um, so as you can see, you can purchase things like um, skins and whatnot, specific stands that'll help you in your like farming stands, storage facilities, but you can also get these cool things. So there's, um, there's bots that you can actually build in the game that'll help you um, kind of on your farm, in your town. And so by collecting all these different parts you can put together a little farm bot or a little crane bot and as you can see those are my percentages on how finished they are and each one so say i chose the crane bot i want to take a look at it it'll tell you all the different chips and things you need uh, and these are all individual nfts so once you've collected all of the pieces then yeah you'll have this little bot and they'll help you like the crane bot helps you speed up your building and the farm bot helps you speed up your farming. So these are a really cool idea. Um, I like the idea of kind of like putting together different NFT pieces to make something new. And you know me, I always love any kind of NFT integration. So yeah, so that's that little, little bit that I kind of thought was interesting. So anyway, so let's jump back into the game. So the cool thing that I really like about Townstar in general is that this is a game first. Um, you know, a lot of the NFT elements, the kind of crypto elements, as you can see, are very much in the background. Like, you don't need to worry about your prize pools or anything like that while you're playing. Like, you just need to worry about making the best kind of town farm that you possibly can. And even if you weren't earning crypto, I would still kind of enjoy this game quite a bit. Because it is something nice, you know, uh, you sit back, you have a coffee, you kind of throw it on. And you can find yourself very quickly if put in a couple of hours playing this game. So now that we're in there, so like I said, you want to click on your guys to do your selling all that. You got your farmers, they're going to be watering. And you see here, like I said before, you need uh, 10 items in each to make a sell. So let's sell our wheat. That's on the way. Cool. And now there's a lot of options for you about how you want to go forward with this. So if you notice, these wheat fields are growing, which is great. Cool. But I don't, I only have got the one farmer. And I don't have a whole lot going on. So if I wanted another farmer, what should I do? Well. First things first is I would recommend if you notice there's different areas that you can build on and this is kind of my entire plot here. And so if I wanted to, because this is, I can choose a little area like grass and I can go and I can build a farmhouse. Now I can build, if you notice, I can build a farmhouse here, but if I put it here, can't build a farmhouse. And that's because it must be placed near a road. Now, that being said, while it does need to be near a road, <laughs> I think we can probably... 
turn off the sound effects. We'll leave the music, but we'll turn off the sound effects. When I first played this game, I just assumed you would need to connect your road through the whole town, which I mean, is fine. I, I At first I was like, all right, that would be kind of maybe annoying. But actually, that is not true at all. So for instance, if I have, if I go all the way over here, it's not connected to anything. I can just go to my terrain and I can just build a road. Like just not attached to anything, like a driveway. And then once that's finished, I can just build a farm. Farmhouse, boom. So it doesn't matter. So like, this is actually something I don't think most people would actually pick up on. I know I wouldn't have picked up on it. Now, if you notice, it hasn't started building yet, and that's because I need some wood. So if you look over here, that's my builder house, and that's my builder. Well, not that, that person running is my builder. And so they're just gonna bring over some wood, and then I can complete that house once it's done. So that's happening there. Got another 12 wheat, sell again. And again, you're not gonna get very much from wheat, but it will take you some time to set up. So different builds will take you different amounts of time. You can set yourself up with like, by the end with refineries and you're like pulling in oil and you're like manufacturing steel. Like blue steel is one of the most expensive items in the game. Um, I think the other one is cake. So if you wanted to say, for instance, go the sugar farming route, you could be doing that and then you could refine all that sugar and then you could make cake and you could sell it. And so our builder is almost there. These guys move comically slow so yeah be aware of that um it's actually funny because you gotta like learn to time everything out based around um you know each person's speed and what they're doing and that sort of thing so if you look there our builders just dropped off the wood and boom i the moment i clicked it it was ready now i actually want to show you if i didn't if i didn't click on that just then it wouldn't have actually built the farmhouse the reason you might want to do that is you have to pay each person so if you see we're at the 60 dollars per minute um so if you wanted to you could set up homes but not finish building them and there's several reasons you might do that like you might have limited storage so for instance um this woodshed this woodshed could only hold uh 10 wood so if i had like a lumberjack going around and he was just cutting wood i this would never be able to hold more than 10 um in the same way the silo can hold 20 wheat but it can't hold anymore so if you let your thing kind of run and fill up, anything else that goes through that will just be destroyed. So you always want to make sure you have your storage ready before you send your workers out to start doing work. All right. So there's some other things. So if you notice here, there's a well and he's going over there and he's watering these fields. You don't actually need to water your fields. I didn't realize this at first, but for instance, if I were to build something over here, and let's say, what do I need? I got, I wanna, um, I'm gonna do a sugarcane field. Okay, and I'm gonna put the sugarcane field right there along the ocean. Now you see right away, it's got five water, right? So it's got more water base. Now if I have that there with five water, now look over here, if I build a sugarcane field here in the middle of nothing, Are we sugar cane? And again, it's not done until I click it. Boom. And you see it's got zero water. Yeah. So that's super important, guys. Like this is, oh my God. It takes them so long to water these freaking crops. Um, like long time, long time. So when you build all your fields against the water like this, it's gonna go way faster. Like, so much faster. And also, your your guys aren't gonna be, so you see there, because it was closer to this pond and this marsh, it was at five. But this one was slightly further away, so it's at two. So there's actually all these hidden mechanics in this game that operate by distance. So that's how water works, but there's also another thing about growth. So any big buildings actually give off shade. I know you can't see it, but it's there. So if you build right next to a building, it's gonna grow way slower than if it's not in the shade. Um, 
And that's the same actually for blocking wind. So the taller a building is, it's going to block more wind. So when you get on the windmills and that sort of thing, they're going to be pretty much useless if they're next to uh, very tall buildings. You're going to want to build them further away. And the distance is, is everything will be affected up to three blocks. What that means is this is all one block around it. Okay, like that's all one. Then that's two way over here and that's three. So you're actually safe when you're that far away. You're not getting caught in any shade, you're not getting caught in any wind, anything like that. So another thing you should look at is the remove and uh, gain option. So if you look at here, if I want to remove this tree, it's red in 15. So what that means is that's going to cost me $15,000 to remove that tree. But to remove the sugarcane field, it's actually going to give me $187. So this is important to know because um, some people actually hold off on getting rid of things because they think it's going to screw them up. Uh, it's not. So if I wanted to, I can get rid of this pond here and boom, that's 5,000 each time. Boom, just like that. And that's all gone. So if I want to go to my shop and let's say I want to, I want to build a windmill. Well, what do I need for that? Well, I need five wood. And it's got to be placed near a road. So if I go over here, say I go to the end here. Or, let me see. What would be the best one? Where is the best placement? I think this is pretty good. It's, you know, a few squares away. Should be fine. The truck won't affect that. And the, um, the fuel depot is not tall enough to really block the wind. All right, so now that we're on there, let's go and we are going to build our windmill. So that needs five wood, so that's gonna go. And you see I've got eight wood there. Now if I wanted more wood, which is totally plausible, I think the best thing to do, again, because you don't need to build your homes, right? You can build your roads wherever, right? So here again, lumberjack house, needs to be built near some sort of road. So I can just go to terrain, build another road, dirt road. And right next door, got a lumberjack out. So now he's gonna chop the wood so I can refill my little woodshed here. And so that'll make sure that that's always building. And I got my building here, construction type two to five. So we might speed some of this up as we go through. Just be aware. And that, that's a note for you, Shanti. Um, speeding up gameplay, but not my voice. Anyway. So, um, so what's so cool about this? I know some of you are like, well, is it, you know, so we got 20. Right. So you see, this is what I'm talking about. Um, that silo is now full. So any more wheat that's delivered there is going to get destroyed. So I actually want to make sure I'm on top of selling it. So that when new wheat goes in, I'm, it's not going to be destroyed. It's going to get saved. Boom. So it goes to 11. So I can actually remove these because I don't necessarily need wheat. And the benefit of that is that's going to open this up to more crops, like different kinds of crops. And also my farmers are going to focus on my sugarcane fields and less on my, um, less on my wheat fields. Although this one's just being default watered and I assume that's because of its location. So if you look, if I want to remove this wheat field, again, got some more. Oh, going back. This is going to. Yeah, so I can just remove this guy, yeah, clear that wheat field, and I'm going to put another sugarcane field there. And again, there's a lot of options for what you can actually build. So like I said. Um, for instance, winery. That'll cost you a million bucks, but you can be pumping out a bunch of wine for a crap ton of money. 
you know, you got wells, that's where your farmers will get their water from, that sort of thing, the salt fields. So you can actually create some pretty cool materials over time uh, and they're going to be varied and you can you can really specify your builds and also the the benefit as i said because things kind of restart and there's our windmills up so because things kind of go um you know they over time you'll have to restart your town and do all that you can actually get some really awesome things so there we are again look woods full so what does that mean that means that we're not getting any benefit from that at the moment so I can actually go here and I can sell the wood as well. So if I want to sell wood, boop, and these off. And again, it's not worth very much, but you don't want your you don't want your storage to be full, because otherwise you're just wasting your time. Really, uh, yeah, wasting your time on something like that. So let's put another. more sugarcane and again like I said being near bodies of water are really gonna help you uh, water these fields that's a two where are we here that's a five so yeah great location and again um, uh, you can remove them at any time it's not gonna affect you too much you're gonna lose a little bit but remember you are paying wages each time so you do want to keep an eye on that but let's say put some more down here but, but there's lots of little things like that like you do want to keep aware of like where you're building things and that they're all not in spots that aren't really gonna help you So I'm gonna sell that wheat. And again, um, you can go, like, you can deliver it wherever you want, it's just the amount of time it takes. So I always recommend building closer to your city, it's gonna take a lot less time. Like, we don't wanna be shipping out to Perth and waiting 20 minutes just for one delivery. Um, but I do like that because it's like, as more players join the game, it's gonna be, you're gonna have these further and further distances to travel. And this is going to really, really determine, like, are you being as productive as possible? Did you set up in the correct place? But also if you notice, like we set up on the ocean, so we have all this ocean here. You can set up on a river, you can set up anywhere. So if I go to the map, I just wanna show you guys this. So if you go here, like you're gonna have different lands that are worth, that have different things. So that's ice, sea, mountain, desert, right? So we built in forest, that's ocean, but even here, you look at all these people, they've built along what I believe is, yeah, this is a massive river. And you see, all that, a lot of people have all set up always along the water. And the reason is, is because these are obviously players who know that they can um, kind of have that uh, passive watering if they jump into that. Is that Greenland up here? Yeah, definitely Greenland. Yeah, so cool. So I always like that. Um, if you look, got some sugar cane ready. And yeah. So I can probably set up another farmhouse. But again, um, I can kind of put them wherever I want. I don't really need them to be right in the middle of town. I can set them up. But for now, just to show you guys, just put on a couple more farmers here. There's my boy with the sugar cane. And you see, six sugar cane, three wood, you can craft sugar. So I've got one sugar cane, seven wood.
And again, it's very calm kind of gameplay. Um, so there's a lot I like about this game particularly, um, other than the obvious. I know I seem kind of like, oh, I'm super into it. But like, it's the, it's just the fact that there is a lot of build options. You're not going to get caught in this like, oh, I'm doing the same thing every time and it's kind of boring, it's kind of automatic, and it's like a point-click nothing. There is a strategy to it, and you can actually develop um, quite a lot. So if you look here, so we're fairly low down right now. Um, the top, let me go to the top 10. Like, that's where we're at, like 27 million stars, like we're at 50. So, um, but again, like I said, it's the top 500 players who are gonna get stuff, and the bottom is 2,980. So there's a, a big opportunity to get into that top 500. It is not as if you're up against millions of players. And again, each town is one person. So it's not like I can go in and make multiple towns. I, my account is linked to one town, um, your account will be linked to one town, and that's it. If you start over, you start over from the beginning, you've destroyed your original town. So you're not going to get a thing where you're going to get like 50 farmers setting up. If they want to do that, they're going to need a separate account for each individual town. Um, and separate computer and authenticate all that. And blah, blah, blah. So once again, we're getting full on wood. So we want to sell our wood. Oh. And that's so again, our silos don't get too full. And I think it's actually time I probably built another silo. Just so that I know... I don't need to worry about that. So again, you don't want to put your, I nearly made that mistake, putting it right next to it. And if you look here, oh no, it's not showing it. Will it show? No. Oh yeah, no, that's good. That's good. All right, look at that. So this tree here next to the home, it's one hour, 37 minutes and 30 seconds to grow that tree. But the one that's further away is 11 minutes. So they're all going to grow at different rates. And again, the ones that are closer to the homes are going to take a lot longer. You see how this one's in the red, this one's in the yellow? And then this one's in the green? It means they're not being affected by shade at all. So they'll grow a lot faster. So it's little things like that that'll kind of like... It'll determine where you kind of put your buildings where you set up your roads, where you set up your far your farming equipment and all that, uh, that's all going to depend. And as you can see, this is on medium graphics, it's actually running pretty smooth. Um, you know, I could lower the graphics and this would be running a lot smoother. But overall, um, yeah, those are kind of like the little tricks and passives that I found really helpful. Um, again, like the amounts you're going to get in... Um, from the prizes, the prize pools will vary, but it's gonna be, you can always come back around, like if you found you went through for one build and you weren't getting the results you wanted, wait for the game to reset, come back, start again, and um, you could really bounce yourself up. Also, I wanna see, like our rank is going up, like we were at 50 stars before, now we're at 60, so as we build up our town, as we are getting more resources, it is being built up. Um, so I'm going to remove this one because it's, it's not really getting watered by the ocean, which I guess makes sense because it's salt water. And again, I'm still, this is even me still learning certain things. So like, obviously the ocean, not that important to be near, you're going to need to be near some sort of fresh water. So these sorts of marshlands and um, ponds and stuff are going to be really helpful. So if I go here, I bet you it's going to be a hell of a lot more than two water, even though this one was on the ocean for water, yeah. So, again, um, it's gonna really benefit you to be choosy about your locations and what's around um, your locations. So, and again, even removing items, um, like removing that rock is 40,000. So, you're gonna wanna be really careful that you're not uh, putting stuff up that's kind of in your own way or anything like that. Um, yeah, and these pastures, these are here for, say, if you wanted to, if you went by a ranch, you would need a pasture, and then that would help, uh, feed your animals, like your, your, your sheep or your cows or anything like that. But we're gonna hold off on that for now. So, where are we at? Everyone's taking a nap. 
lazy bones. Um, I won't get to it probably in this video, but if you run out of money to pay wages, uh, they will stop working. Everyone will just kind of go to bed and that'll be it. And they'll be like, we're not working again until you send my paycheck, uh, which is just like me and my boss. So uh, yeah, be aware of that. Um, that being said though, that doesn't mean like if you run out of wage money, the game is over. Uh, you can always come back and kind of sort something out. Like you can come back and essentially, um, as long as you have 10 of something, and again, it doesn't need to be in desperate straits, um, you can sell your gasoline. I don't recommend this. I know it seems like, oh, like 14,000. Like, that's awesome. But you really need gas. Like, you can't make any deliveries do anything else without gas. So, you know, um, it's also going to take a while before you'd be able to set up refineries. Uh, kind of, generally speaking, if I were to sit here for the next mm, three hours, four hours maybe, uh, yeah, I could get, easily get this whole place uh, self-sustainable and that sort of thing. But it will be quite a bit of time. It, it, it will not just happen. Um, and again, that's what it is. Um, mostly what I like about this is kind of like the leaderboards of different builds. Um, I like that it's a game first. There obviously is a lot of waiting. To be honest, I if I had any complaint about this game, it was that the music is so goddamn sleepy time. And things do take a while, so sometimes I am kind of like... Uh, you know, sweet birds chirping and very soft piano is putting me to bed. But overall, um, the way it's organized and stuff and the, I don't know, just the little details of like what you can actually build. I think it's just very cool. Um, I think it's well set up and very interesting. Um, I might actually... What do you guys think? I might set up another well. Um, I might set it up over here just a bit closer. And the well again is just so your farmers can um, water your crops. So th these are self-watering crops, but you never know. Um, oh wow, pollens. Yeah, that's the other thing too. Is j j just keep an eye on certain things like, um, you know, I'm keeping an eye on my wood right now, and you know that's going to keep going up until I build another depot. If I really wanted to build another depot, which I guess I will, I can go here. And again, storehouse, and that'll be for wood. So, uh, like, sorry, woodshed. Um, the storehouse is gonna be for your, keep your goods fresh. And then the woodshed is for your wood and lumber. So, that's gonna be for my wood and lumber. And then right there on that side, I can build another storehouse. A silo, sorry. So that's the other thing too. So store basic crops here at the silo. A storehouse is keeping your crafted goods fresh. So what does that mean? Uh, again, your silo is going to hold raw materials like your sugar cane and your wheat, etc., etc. However, your um, your storehouse is going to hold your finished materials. So that's going to be things like. Um, you know, your once your not your sugar cane is going to hold your actual sugar. It's not going to hold your storehouse would hold your flour instead of your wheat, that sort of thing. Uh, so again, like I said before, you want to make sure you have enough storage for each individual item prior to um, completing it. Otherwise, you're going to be kind of stuck in this middle ground. Um, also, I really should. You see how I have three wheat there? Like, I can't get rid of that wheat until I get it to 10. So even though I deleted a wheat field and I did all that, uh, mostly because I didn't want to bother it, it would be better, generally speaking, to suck it up, build another wheat field, get it to 10, and then sell it. So I might do that right now. Uh, and the benefit of that is just going to be so you can get that round number, so you're selling it. So when you switch over your crops, you can put all of your time and energy into the one type of crop. Um, and so you're not, yeah, having to keep going back and being like, oh, well, I've only got this much. I'm just got that sitting there and it's just taking up room in my silo right now. So where I could have 20 sugar cane, instead three of those spots are being take up, taken up by wheat that I'm not really going to use all that. So because I built another silo, again, I'm not another silo, sorry, a wood storage facility, that's full, but then my lumberjack, he's gonna start going to the empty one. So that's beneficial, and again, 
12, could just sell it. And as you can see, it's barely worth the gas, honest to God, like wheat and wood, that sort of thing. It, it really is, isn't really worth it to sell. And that's why you're gonna to wanna to get up to the point that you are crafting kind of more advanced things. So if I go here, uh, if I wanna craft, again, where are we at for sugar cane? We got five. You should have one more on the way anytime now. Um, if any of these sugar cane, is that almost done? Almost done, 25 seconds. Yeah, so again, and boom, you see, it's very, so again, this isn't going to feel like a blockchain game where I'm constantly checking in on like the amount I'm earning and like all that sort of crap. It's going to be very much in the background and it's going to be, it's a very kind of calming experience. And it's also very interesting. Like you're going to find it's going to be set up differently than when you're building in the forest, when you go build on the river, when you go build in the desert each area is going to look and feel very different and even the way you're going to want to set up like i like the i like putting these houses kind of on the outskirts it's just basically more for yeah wor worrying about that shade worrying about that sort of thing that it's not all um blocking up my nice fields all right great so i just want to wait for that sugar to come in so now i'm going to go here to the windmill and i'm going to craft sugar cane so you see he's heading out and what he's going to do now, he's going to collect the ingredients I need for it. So I need three wood and six sugar cane. So that's what he's going to do. And he's just going to go around back and forth and do that. So while he's doing that, I'm going to go and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build another windmill over here. So again, we want to go down our terrain, we want to make sure there's a road there. Once the road's done, we can go up to the top. And we're going to build another window. So as you can see, it's starting to get a little more self-sufficient slowly. Um, you know, we're going to keep an eye on this wheat field so we're at eight so we've got two more passes at that and then we're just going to go ahead and get rid of it and try and stick to the uh the sugar cane after that yeah so gala games has had um so obviously they've had quite a bit of success with this game um and i think in general they've got very much the right idea uh which is that i don't want to the crypto element should be pretty much in the background um, everything should just kind of flow. I shouldn't feel like I'm desperately behind. Um, there's no real like pay to win options. Like, I mean, there is a gold membership and that will give you access to some kind of basic equipment stuff, but in no way is it going to put you, let me put it like you, you to make the top 500, you absolutely do not be needing to spend a dime. Uh, and this is not difficult to set up at all. So again, that's going to be my last wheat. It's going to be picked up. Well, great. And now I can remove this. Boom. And I can set up another sugarcane field. So there's a few different, like, there's actually different strategies for this. Like, it's weird. And I mean, again, in, in, in some ways, it's funny. Like, people will have, you know, they'll have like a sugar rush strategy, a strategy to get a bunch of wine, um, you know, different strategies for setting up uh, your more advanced stuff. So if I go to like, say the industrial stuff, um, yeah, you can make different like fabrics. Yeah, making glass, there are mines. Yeah, even here, nuclear power. Uh, yeah, but, and you'll wanna set up those things by like, say you set up a water pump. Now again, I don't have these, uh, so I'll need 25 of those guys and 50,000 in dollars. And you would set that up and basically that would, um, you know, you could get those water pumps, help you set up your refineries, your nuclear power plants. And all this is just going to kind of keep collecting. So as long as you're making sales, sell that wheat. So yeah, as long as you're making those sales, you should be all good. And it can get pretty close, like. You do want to make sure you're bringing in enough to, you don't want to get out of gas. 
you don't want to run out of any of that, but um, everything else is kind of set up in a very simple way. And again, moving your Gala token around, uh, very simple as well. It's all going to get uh, transferred directly to the um, uh, to your account um, as they do prize pools. And they'll give you the clock down to each prize pool. So again, um, this is the, the current kind of uh, evaluation. So they've got uh, 23 hours and 38 minutes before they kind of reset. And then everyone starts off at the beginning. So it's every Tuesday it's going to reset and it's going to be uh, a kind of a new or every Monday, I should say Monday, or Tuesday. Anyway, it resets. And so you're going to want to kind of keep on top of it. Try and get in there the first day or as soon as it resets. So you're as far in advance as possible. You get the first choice of where you want to set up your um, your kind of new town. And that's going to put you in the best available position to earn as much so you can make that top 500 and you can actually start earning some crypto. And yeah, I mean, like I said, it really depends on how well you do. Like, I believe the top prize, I want to say it's something like 10,000 Gala coins. Um, it might actually be more, but let's say for now 10. So, you know, you're, it, that's a, it's a pretty penny. It's not, it's not nothing. Let's say that much. Um, and so if I were to do the math on that, it would be somewhere in the realm of like, so if a thousand gala coins were, you know, something like $7, 10,000, we're looking at like 70 bucks in a prize pool. But if you get that every week, just for literally building up this town, it, it's kind of amazing. Like it's not, again, this, this, it's not even to the same degree as what I would have considered. Like if you remember, um, we did a video on like merge cats, for instance, and that was like constant kind of playing a little bit, even though it did um, run in the background. So it's kind of similar to that that runs in the background, but um, it's not like say something like Decentraland where you need to like build this beautiful work of art before you're going to make anything or, you know, some other games where, yeah, there is quite a bit of a uh, randomness to it. There is a very specific strategies that you can develop in this game over time that you will improve. You will start shooting up a lot faster than say the first time you pick this up. And if, as long as you kind of keep those little hints and tricks that we mentioned um you know things like making sure you're near kind of you're naturally watering your crops you are um ensuring that nothing's built in the shade you're ensuring everything's you know your windmills are getting as much wind as they need you're not losing a bunch of your wood or, or any of your other products because they're just sitting um with nowhere to be stored uh you know if you have all that um kind of like set up in a proper way absolutely you'll get some cool stuff done so if you look, four to six sugar cane, and it's got the three wood. And so we still haven't quite nearly done picking up one more sugar cane. And we'll need one more after that, and then we should be fine. Let's see, is there any more sugar cane ready to go? And again, any breaks where there is me just kind of like not talking or you wanted to get to the next thing or whatever just speed it up um again i'm going over kind of a lot of little tips and tricks for the gameplay and how it works and that sort of thing so yeah one thing i will tell you is that so yeah uh, so gala is an erc 20 coin and yeah well it it has increased in value i think originally it was like not even that long ago a couple months it was like at 0 0.006 and it's up to 0 0.007 so you know it, it is tracking upwards and again as you saw we're only talking about what Around less than 3,000 players, like 2,500 players, top, bottom 10. Less than 3,000 players. So, I mean, you could see how if this started being picked up again, more and more people, it will really kick off and you'll really be, the potential to be bringing in the gala being worth a lot more. Uh, so when you win those prize pools, it's pretty awesome. But again, because they give out so much gala um, and there is the option to kind of constantly improve your builds, constantly improve your strategies. Um, I would I would put this as one of the top, you definitely can actually make crypto from this game. It's not like totally unfair. It's not gonna feel like it's like not even a game, just kind of like a mining operator. It's, and it's also not, um, it's not like the same sort of boring, like, Again, you are going to need to put in some time in it to make sure you're strategizing well. But I mean, I don't know. I kind of put it as like, 
for me, it feels almost like slow StarCraft. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like, just the mining options to it. And again, very Farmville-y. I do appreciate how in-depth the crafting system goes in this game. That it's not just like, well, you just sell wheat or potatoes. It's, no, 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 I want to craft some better items and, and uh, get some higher quality goods and start selling those. So... Yeah. Got some sugar cane right there. As soon as I get picked up, he's gonna go. And once again, um, I just want to show you guys um, some sugar being crafted. So, you know, you will need obviously a little bit of patience. Like I said, these guys move abysmally slow. Um, it's hilarious to watch these fat bastards run. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it does take some time. So, you know, there is that. Again, that should be my sugar. Ah, and there we go. Windmill's working. It's milling that sugar. And my boy's over here just sleeping. He doesn't need, there's nothing for him to grab. So one of the things you want to make sure you do is, yeah, so you're not kind of over doing yourself you don't want to be at a position where kind of no one's like everything you want to be kind of working together you want your farmers always working you don't want to have them ever just kind of like hanging out doing nothing for extremely long periods because that is not going to benefit you at all you want to make sure that you have enough room in your silos that you that everyone's kind of doing something at all times otherwise yeah you're just kind of paying for people to hang out uh, and you don't want that. Boom, and look at that. So now he's taken it, and that's exactly what I wanted to show you. Oh my god, I was waiting that long. So I did not build a storehouse for the sugar, right? So if you see, it took all that time to build that sugar, but it, now it's just gone. So what do we do? Oh crap. Well, if you remember, I went back before. I was here, and I was looking at the storehouse, if you recall that, for dried goods. This is the one you need to keep your crafted goods fresh. Uh, yeah, so that's a really, really important point. So do not start building stuff until you have storage to put it, or it will just get destroyed and you just wasted your time. So yeah, I just want to show you that. And now, I want to go, and I want to show you a different biome. So we're going to create a new town again. And like I said, you can only have one town at a time. So boom, wiped away, and we start again. And uh, you guys, I hope you appreciate this. I'm just destroying all my good hard work in town style. <laughs> so we're gonna go again. You gotta go, go to play now. And look, if I go up here, I'm gonna go to yeah somewhere in North America this time. Although it is super populated right now. Let me see if we can't find a place by a river. That's ocean, that's ocean, that's ocean. Or even by a lake, maybe? Ah! Okay. So... You see how good that spot is? So he's surrounded by water on all three sides, so that's a really good spot. Um... And so for us, if I wanted to get us a great spot, which is going to be hard because, again, we're coming in at the end of the prize pool event. So if I was coming in on, like, day one, most of these spots would probably be empty. Or at least quite a lot of them would be. So... Okay. So I don't have any... Any more that are surrounded on three sides? No, that makes sense. Okay. So, we're going to put ours right here. Again, we're in the forest. So, GCP land. And I just want to show you guys the difference, and I'll get rid of this one. I'll go back, and I'll go to a desert after this. So, if you look here now, I'm right in the pocket. But the difference is here... Remember before we built on the ocean, 
and it didn't really affect the water. Uh, if I build on the river... Or a lake or whatever, it's gonna immediately start growing. It's gonna be immediately watered. Um, and it's gonna have a very different uh, reaction. So. You see, it's constantly, it's growing wheat, but... So it's ready right away, and at full water, there was no need to water anything. So this is why location really matters. Um, you could be basically from your initial choice of location, again, all of your water is already set up, and look, all the cities change. So now, instead of in, if you notice in Australia, I only had three options of cities, but because I'm on the continent, I'm in like the Americas now, I can send it anywhere. I can send my shit to Toronto or yeah, Sao Paulo is the closest place. So plan my route and off it goes. So, but you see now the each one of these trips is going to take four minutes and 38 seconds. So there's a bit of a balancing act you need to keep in mind. You're, you're balancing how close you are to the, um, to the city so you can make your deliveries but you also want to balance exactly uh, what is around you and what are your options for building. So if you look at these now, these are just going to be ready. They're going to self water every time. So in the other ones, if you notice, I kept having to be like, go back. My farmers would do like, you know, they maybe it would start off at five out of seven or something. They'd have to water it a little bit. You don't need to water these at all. These are going to water themselves just because of their proximity because this is all um, fresh water. So again, these are things that the game doesn't tell you any of this. You just you just jump in and it's like figure it out, which is like I don't know. It's Farmville meets Dark Souls. Like <laughs> good luck. Uh, you know we're not gonna give you any sort of info and uh, and good luck to you. So I'm gonna show you one more biome just because we did two forests. So I just want you to see how it can be fairly different and just kind of so you have an idea of kind of how deep this game goes and all the options you have for you. Because again, it like all right, like. I don't know. I, there's so much detail here. I feel I could sit here for the next five hours kind of discussing it. But look, if I go up here. So we want. Look, ice, ice, mountain forest. So I can't place my towns here because it's all dead. Right? Not useful. Can't build your town in the mountain. But if I go here, I can, right? Little forest and that's all ocean. So now if I go to Australia, I just want to show you the difference around deserts. Okay. So here we have a little pocket and I can put it in the middle of the desert. I can put it next to this box coin mine and that's a mountain and these are rivers. So if I wanted to, I could put it out literally in the middle of nothing. So I'm going to do that just to show you. So Death Valley, Australian edition. And I just want you to see the difference. So this is the desert. And if you see like the biomes different, like this is what I mean. Uh, you can actually like part of the fun of this game is like take your time and look around and see all the different weird biomes. However, I want you to notice this oil seep. You will only get these in certain biomes in the desert and that will help you significantly. So you might, for instance, want to go the route where you're, where you're not really farming, but you're just kind of setting up a refinery out here. And that is totally legit. You can absolutely do that. So, and if you look at the benefits of this, if I remove that, that is plus 25,000 for me. Boom. Right? So there are a lot of drawbacks, say, to building in the desert, but there are some benefits as well. And you can kind of, like, each time you go around, go back, look around, see what you can build. See what's available to you, you know what I mean? Like, see what the lands are actually providing you in your area, and you're definitely going to look around, and I think you're going to come across some interesting stuff over time. So again, we can go to the terrain, I got fuel storage. So if I wanted to, now, I have this oil pump here but there's also a sand mine so if you look here you can harvest silica from the earth with a sand mine so because i spent that i got boom 45 
I'm gonna put that right there, right? So now I can build a sand mine, and that's gonna harvest salt. So instead of building like a bunch of salt flats, that sort of thing, this is gonna do it this way. So if I go here, again, doing your basics. So some things are never gonna change, like you're always gonna sell, but look at that. So now I'm in the middle of the desert, it's gonna take me pretty much the same distance to go to any town. So again, Melbourne's a little closer. And also, not just that, my fuel costs went up. So if I wanna to go to Melbourne from here in the middle of the desert, it's gonna cost me three fuel instead of one. So again, there are drawbacks to being far away from the city. There are drawbacks to being far away from water. But there are also maybe some benefits and some hidden things that you maybe wouldn't have come across if you only ever stuck to forests and rivers. So that's what I mean about there's a lot of like depth to the game. There's a lot of different areas to kind of check out. But until you've gone and kind of built and set up a new town, you won't even know. So it's always kind of exciting. That's one of the things I like about this game is you don't until you kind of get in the area, you can develop several different strategies to um, kind of put yourself into those prize pools. And you can, you might find you prefer, you know, you you want to go out into the middle of nothing. So you see there it needs two energy. So what does that mean? Well, I didn't build anything. Nothing's providing me power right now. So if you go here, remember we were talking about windmills. What do they do? They provide you with a certain amount of labor, wind pumps provide you with water. So if you need energy, well, what are you gonna build? Well, that's the thing. You've got some options. So there's things like that will require uh, energy, different different um, amounts. So if you look here, an oil pump is going to bring crude oil up to the surface and a wind turbine is gonna provide you with energy. So if I wanted to put a wind turbine there, again, it's not being blocked by any tall buildings, so it should get full access of wood. And then it's gonna provide power for my sand mine. But if I wanted to, um, I could have, instead of building a sand mine, let's say I built that oil refinery, it's got, uh, that, uh, sorry, um, that oil pump, that's gonna bring up crude oil, but then I would need to build a refinery to refine that back into gasoline. And you could set up an area where you're just selling gasoline. So there's a lot of options. Like you don't feel restricted like in the way of, oh, well, I just need to grow wheat or I'm just gonna grow grapes and make wine. It's experiment and try out different things and you might find that, oh, I actually prefer, you know, maybe, you know, this is my first time, for instance, um, building up in the middle of the desert. And I kind of like it. Like, I mean, not just the uh, kind of view of it. Like, I like, you know, that it's like a little bit different I like that it's not, um, there's different options. And again, I'm not crazy that it's so far from the city, but maybe next time I'm looking at the world, um, maybe I won't worry so much about building on the ocean. Maybe I'll want to build up here, you know? Maybe I'll want to set it up. I mean, I am kind of sad that they didn't include uh, some Aussie cities. Like, how's Perth on here, but Brisbane's not? But anyway, you know, maybe I want to build up in this little square up here anywhere around Perth. So again, it kind of changes your perspective on uh, what exactly you can accomplish with the game. And so again, ready, energy's ready. So what do I do here? So I want this crafting silica. And I want this here. So you might think like, well, why isn't it providing you energy directly there? And once again, um, you've put it in the wrong place. Well, I've done it, but I've just done it again just to show you um, there are various differences. So if I did that, if I go over here and I wanted to put up my wind turbine, again, it needs to be by the road. So once again, I can just as easily, and again, this isn't a great setup. Like I wouldn't recommend setting up your um, kind of settlements the same way I am. I'm just doing this to show you how building things closer together, further apart will affect it and will cost you. So basically I'm just trying to save you guys time so you're not making 
um, a thousand and one mistakes um, the first time you play through. Boom, we got our little amount of thing back. And we're gonna build our wind turbine. And there's a lot of options here. So we haven't even gotten into things like the more advanced stuff, like the steel mills or the refineries, the mines, glass factories. But again, these will take um, kind of hours and hours of, of dedication. And you're gonna want to, like I'd say you could probably get a full, I'd probably say you could probably get a fully um, set up kind of independent um, settlement within like four hours. So you see now before it wasn't doing anything, now it's charging energy. So that's gonna go, hopefully, directly into that. And yeah, so that's kind of like the overall vibe of the game. Um, there's, you know, again, it's there's a lot of strategy here uh, and deliberateness. Um, I kind of want to show you guys why, the reason I kind of wanted to go through it in this particular way is just so you understand why you can't just be kind of tossing things up um, willy-nilly. Um, you will need to kind of take your time. You will need to kind of get used to different strategies, different ways of um, engaging with the world. It won't necessarily come as a second nature right away, but hopefully this video kind of helps you get an idea of um, how you can get started, what needs to be done, and um, and all of that. So yeah. All right guys, so that was Townstar. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, we are working a lot of like little technical issues in our studio, so I'm sorry if there's been any kind of like weird noise. I had a bunch of sirens going off earlier and that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, we are always looking for help to improve our studio. Um, I'm gonna leave a link where we're, our projects where we're building our own soundboards as well as a couple of links where we get, where we've gotten all of our equipment and associate links and that sort of thing, because clicking on those or, or making any purchases through that really helps us out. Also, if you just want to pitch in, you want to buy me a coffee, something silly like that, because uh, you enjoy the stuff, um, then by all means, I'll leave a link for that as well. However, uh, do not feel obliged. Uh, honestly, I just want you guys to enjoy the content and um, yeah, don't don't feel that now we're gonna start uh, charging you out the wazoo if you want to check out our videos or anything like that. No, no. Anyways, guys, we really appreciate your support, um, and I really hope that this was helpful. I hopefully we got over some uh, little tips, tricks that'll help you get started on your own little town and town star. And uh, yeah, hopefully um, I will see you guys soon in the next video. So thanks again, guys, and uh, keep it crypto, everybody. <laughs>